Hey everyone, Garrett Baird here, and I'm going to walk you through my Alpha 7 Mark III and show you how I customize it and set it up for filmmaking. All right, so I've, I've done a lot of customization with this. I went ahead and set everything up the way I like it. Um, otherwise, this video would be, I don't know, a couple hours long. So I'm just going to walk you through some of the things that um, I've changed. First thing I do uh, when I get any camera is I personally shoot... Um, most of my video projects in 30p and the reason why I do that is sometimes I ride my shutter uh, during a wedding ceremony or a wedding shoot um, for exposure on a perfect world I'd love to have ND filters and be able to do that but when I'm running and gunning um, I just I do ride that shutter and by shooting in 30p this um, does away with that uh, staccato look, that really jerky look that you get when you shoot with 24p and an extremely high shutter. So I think 30p works very well for me. So the first thing I do with the new camera is change that and I forget what the default is on these but uh, I think it was just HD. So we're going to change it to XAVCS 4K which is in the second tab there at the top and on the very first page. Then we're going to go down to record setting and see where it says 24p. We're just going to change that to 30p at 100 megabits per second. So right beneath that is the S and Q settings. Now, while you're here, let's go ahead and change that to also match the um, 30p. There we go at 120 frames per second. Um, this is a great option on top of your dial here. If you want to get a slow motion shot really quick, you just turn that knob and you're in the S and Q settings. Also, the slow and quick settings by default on this camera was set to automatic, which is not preferable in most situations. Now to change that, you can see the S and Q exposure mode is grayed out. So to enable that, we're going to click the dial up here. We're going to turn it to S and Q which is one notch over, kicks you out of the menu. We're going to go back into it and go up there to exposure mode. Now I have it set to manual. You can set it to be whatever you want and then just go back to your normal video mode. So on tab two, page five, you're going to see an option called zoom setting. Right now it says optical zoom only. We're going to change that to clear image zoom. And later we're going to program that option to one of these custom buttons so you can trigger that during the day if you're, you know, maybe you want to just get a little closer on an emotional moment that's happening somewhere or, or any, anything really. You can hit that and it will punch in a little closer for you and you're able to, you know, zoom in and still retain that detail. So not to be confused with digital zoom. It's, it's a whole on a whole nother level and I really enjoy using that. We'll program that later. Tab two, page six, you're going to see an option that says grid line. And I like setting mine to rule of thirds grid. And what this is going to do for you is give you a nice rule of thirds. It's kind of difficult to see on this screen with this dark background. Let me see if I can brighten that up. There we go. I'm going to way overexpose it. But you can kind of see there that you have these really fine lines, um, not, not the focus box, but the really fine lines that helps you frame up your shot into the rule of thirds or just make sure your shot is straight. For instance, I go handheld quite a bit, and these lines really help me get my shot framed up. And with that grid display, you're going to make sure that your marker display is switched to off. If your marker display is switched to on, you're going to get um, these lines. Now, this may be preferable for you. For me, they're a little too bright and a little too obtrusive for my shooting style. So I want to make sure and turn those off. So I just have just a hint um, of those, those grid lines. I really, really like that. For autofocus on tab two, page two, um, on a lot of cameras in the past, I have set these to maximum available and for different situations you can change it to match whatever you're shooting for weddings when we do a lot of weddings um, i found that when you max these options out for the track sensitivity and the af drive speed it seemed to be a little too fast for instance it would um, change focus from one thing to another a little too quickly and search a little too quickly and not quite have that organic look i was um, going after so i just switched it back to normal for the af drive speed and standard for track sensitivity. And you, you can change that to your preference, but for most of what I do, this autofocus system on the A7 Mark III is fantastic, and this does very well in most situations. 
with the autofocus face detection, you're going to want to make sure and enable the visual display of what faces are in focus. So we're going to go into tab one and page six, set face priority in autofocus. And the option we're looking at is called face detection frame display. If that is set to off, you're not going to be able to tell which face is in focus. With this set to on, it's going to show you not only who is in focus, but the next closest one that it will jump to if they does lose that face. So that's a very um, good option to have enabled so you can see who is in focus. Now, if by chance you're not a fan of the record button on the back of the camera, you can change it to record when you press the shutter button. Now to do this, you're on tab two, page three, you're going to go movie with shutter. And we're going to just switch that to on. So now when you press the shutter button, it's going to start recording. Okay, this is a great option if you're out shooting photography and you just want to be able to punch that record button even in photo mode and start recording video doing some kind of hybrid shoot perhaps. Um, if you go to the second tab on page nine, this movie button option. Now it can be just so that you can hit the record button always, no matter what mode you're in, it's always going to record. Or if you find yourself maybe hitting it by accident, you can go in here and set it to movie mode only. So the record button will only function if your dial up here is set to movie mode. We're just going to leave that in always because I like to have that ability no matter what setting I'm on. So we switched to Sony about a little over four years now, I guess it has been. And the 10 years prior to that, we had been using another camera system. With that system, I really got used to um, having this back dial here be my aperture and the front dial up here being my shutter. With the new Sony system, it was in reverse and it drove me crazy until I found out that I could go into the menu, tab two, and we're on page eight. And just by a simple click of the button here, we can reverse that and put it back to uh, the way I'm used to using it. And that's just another example of Sony adding so many different customizable features that let you set up the camera and use it how you want to use it. And I'm very appreciative for that. Now the Alpha 7 Mark III has fantastic battery life, but if you want to squeeze just a bit more juice out of it, go over to tab number three, and on page one, we're going to go to airplane mode and make sure that's on. What that's going to do for you is disable your Wi-Fi, um, Bluetooth, and also the NFC. So you're not using any additional power that you don't have to. And that's going to squeeze just a bit more juice out of it. Audio signals. So I want to disable those. That way when I'm shooting, um, whether it be in a church or somewhere, maybe there's an intimate moment happening with a bride and groom or something else, maybe a parent reading a letter, things like that. I don't want to make any noise and distract from what's going on. So I'm going to go down to my audio signals, which is on the video tab two and page nine. We're going to go down and just turn those off. That way we don't get any unexpected beeps going on. As you're scrolling through the menu, you may come across an option that you think, oh, I think I'd probably use that at some point, but maybe not a lot, but it's something you want to get to quickly when you do need it. So rather than putting it on a custom button or rather than putting it in your function, quick function menu, I like to put some of those options in what's called my menu. And we can customize it to be whatever we want. It's called My Menu. And I have just a few um, set up there now. So these were blank when I first got the camera, but I have put these in there just because, you know, I might need to get them quickly, but maybe not as quickly as some of the other things. So like just a few here is um, Send to Smartphone, Format the Memory Card, and my Record Media Settings are just a few things that I use frequently, but not so much that I want to take up in one of my custom buttons for. And to add a menu option to that, you're gonna to go to page two on the My Menu tab, and you're just gonna go Add Item, and let's just do White Balance for now. And it's gonna ask you where you wanna place that. We're just gonna place it at the bottom. Oh, let's put it at the top. White Balance is important, so it's, it's added. So now every time we're um, out in the field and we need to access that option, whatever it may be, you can just go to the My Menu tab, which is on the far right, and on the first page, there we have White Balance. All right, now I'm going to customize my quick function menu. This has been put on there just to give you some additional options of things you need frequently. 
maybe not frequently enough to take up one of your precious custom buttons on the camera, but um, something that I definitely would use quite often and I need to access quickly. So on tab two, page eight, you're gonna see down here towards the bottom, function menu set. Now your options are function upper one through six and function lower one through six. And what that's referring to is, let's go back out of here and go into our function menu. The upper one through six refers to the top row, lower one through six refers to the bottom row. And I'm just gonna leave this on the screen for a minute so you can see how, how I've used it. Um, I, actually, I'm just gonna talk you through these. Um, audio record level, self-explanatory, just lets me control the audio level that I'm recording. Prioritize record media. This is going to let me choose which slot I'm recording to, which is set to priority. Function upper three I have set to center lock on autofocus. Now the name is a little misleading because you do not have to have it centered perfectly for it to lock on. Let's give you a quick demonstration of that. We're gonna use this um, Mavic battery here. And we are just going to press with the touch screen on the battery. And you can see as I move the battery around, it tracks the subject, which is really handy, especially for toast. We have somebody maybe walking around and moving. Uh, works as well as if you're moving your camera. But, and also it remembers its subject. So if we go off the screen and then we come back, it's gonna reacquire and start tracking that same point again. Very, very handy feature to have in the field. The fourth one is set to zebra level. I have that right above um, zebras on or off. I set my zebras to 100 plus. And what this does for me, it just gives me a wall, a barrier to let me know that, hey, there's almost no information there. So you need to really dial it back and change your exposure. Um, in a perfect world, you know, when I'm doing an interview, I may have... Um, the zebra level set to maybe 75 with just a little bit of, of zebras on maybe the highlights on their forehead and nose. But for the most part, when I'm shooting run and gun, you know, especially at a wedding, I don't want uh, all that information on the screen. It really pulls me out of what I'm doing. So I set that to 100 plus. So I know, you know, hey, you need to you need to rein that exposure in a little bit. And then right beneath that is the uh, zebra level on and off. If I just want it off entirely, which I do sometimes at a reception when there's a lot of uh, DJ lights and dance lights going on. It's very distracting for me as a shooter. So I will turn those totally off. Upper five is a touch operation that turns the screen touch on and off. Sometimes I don't like it to be on there, so I'll just disengage that. Um, function six is face priority and autofocus. That is very self-explanatory. It just turns off the face detection when you're in autofocus. Okay, over here on page two, we have the lower six. We'll go through here real quick. The peaking option is going to help you with manually focusing if you are in a situation where it's kind of hard to see the exact focus. Maybe you're outside and it's really bright. This is going to put a outline of what is in focus on your screen. That way you can pull focus that much quicker and more accurately. Shoot mode, this is gonna change it from, let's just go over here and I'll show you. Um, it's gonna change it from manual to shutter, aperture, whatever you decide. Um, it fits your needs at the time. Silent shooting, uh, this is more for photography, but um, I do find myself wanting to turn that on and off. So I went ahead and put that in there. That just disables all the um, sounds. So when you take a picture, it is totally silent. Very, 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 very nice to have. Zebra display, we talked about that earlier. It's just sitting right beneath um, my zebra settings. Gamma display assist. This is very handy because if you shoot in um, log and with it on, it just bumps the contrast, uh, bumps the color. I mean, it's definitely oversaturated, but it just seems easier to see and give you a rough idea of what it's going to look like uh, when you get it into your editing software. And lastly, but certainly not least, our function lower six is our picture profile. So I will change that depending on what situation I'm faced with. Usually I'm switching between um, Cine 2 or S-Log 2 or 3. 3 is really great, but it's not something I want to use all the time. So I'm usually between that and Cine 2. Cine 2 really is the best way to get nice highlight roll-offs without going into S-Log. And I could spend the next couple hours probably talking about um, the customization you can do inside of PP6 to get it right where you want it. And it's very subjective. Some of you may want your blacks crushed a little bit. Other people may want a little more detail on that. But there are so many... 
um, options that you can just go down here and go through. For instance, the color phase. You can go in here and dial that in, then go back to your color depth and go through each individual color and turn those up or down to be whatever you like. If you like maybe less yellow and more reds, you can go there and, and dial that in. The options are quite literally endless. One thing I do definitely is turn down my detail. Um, go about to about, I think about minus four, just so there's not a lot of um, artifacting from some of the digital sharpening that goes on in camera. So yes, the gamma I have set to Cine 2. Of all the settings, that's probably the one that has the nicest highlight retention without going to S-Log. And then color mode, s gamut 3 Sin. That seems to be most pleasing for what I like. But you may like something different. So go ahead and you can play around with that to your heart's content. There are so, so many options. And of course, I do turn my saturation down a bit because I want to be able to push and pull those more in my editing software. All right, that does it for the quick function menu. I'm just going to leave that on the screen for a second so you can check that out. All right, so the custom keys are there for items you want to adjust or engage rather quickly. I'll show you how to program those and then I will go through them and show you which ones I've chosen to put on my custom keys. Now, one thing to be very aware of is that when you're changing these, you have two options there. Um, actually, you have three options. You have the custom key for photography, video, and then playback. So what's really neat about this is whatever you choose your video uh, custom keys for, when you switch to photography on the dial up here, whether it be aperture priority or manual, whatever it may be, those keys are going to change depending on how you set them up. So you don't have to have one set to rule them all. You can have a different set for each shooting style that you choose, whether it be video, photo, and so on. So let's go into our custom key for video and very self-explanatory you have three pages showing you all of the options you have the control wheel i have that set up for my iso so if i'm out in the field i can just grab that and manipulate that i ride that quite often so that's really handy to have right there button one through four and these are two on the top one here on the side and one here on the bottom and real quick, I'll just go through those. So for the custom one, which is on the top of the camera here, I have it set up for APS-C or full frame select. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to let me use APS-C mode, which punches in a little tighter for me. Now both of these buttons on top, I have set up to give me additional reach. So my custom one button is set up to punch in just a little bit for the Super 35 mode. And then the custom two button, I hit that and it enables what we talked about earlier, that clear image zoom. So I can really get in there tight and add an, an additional 1.5 zoom, I guess you would call it, um, of distance. And that really is helpful sometimes during a wedding day. Custom button two we've already talked about, which is the zoom. Custom button three is for monitor brightness. Now, one thing that I really love about these new Sony bodies is that you can use the full potential and the full brightness of the monitor when shooting in 4K. For instance, on the A7S Mark II, when you shoot in 4K, the screen dims and you don't have the full brightness at your disposal. Well, now I have it set up to control my monitor brightness with custom button three. So let's say I'm inside and I, I know it's gonna be really, really bright outside and we're going outside to do the creative session with the bride and groom or just any situation where it's extremely bright. I punch the C3 button and it pulls up my monitor brightness. Now I can just, just max it out if I like, or I can take it another step further and I can use Sony's sunny weather option. So you hit that and it gets even brighter. And that is a huge help when you're out in the field and it's you know one of those days where there's no clouds, it's super bright and you're able to actually see what you're shooting. So that is a huge feature. I'm very, very happy they included. All right, and number four is white balance. So I have that down here by the trash can. Um, and you can just hit that anytime I want and I can change my white balance uh, dial in uh, custom. Real quick tip, if you're ever on one of these and it's just maybe not quite what you're wanting, you can actually hit the arrow key over the directional pad over one more time pulls up this um, little white balance adjustment. So you can maybe push it more towards the blue, the magenta, green, yellow, whatever you'd like that fits your shooting style. And it's little options like that that just make it uh, much more customizable so it can be exactly what you want as the creative shooter. All right, on page two, the only thing I've really changed is the center button on the wheel here. And what I've set it up for is to change my focus area so I can go from zone to center to, um, this is probably my most used option is the 
flexible spot medium. Occasionally I will go with a small one, but this enables me to move that um, square around and that flexible spot to whoever I want to be shooting. It's just a great, great, um, as it says, flexible option. So back on these custom keys, if you leave it to follow custom, whatever you set it for photography, it will be the same for video. So I've just left those alone for the time being. All right, let's go to page three. Now, the way I do autofocus, I'm sure you've heard of back button focusing. I kind of do that uh, for video and kind of in reverse. So I have it set to autofocus all the time, but I have my auto exposure lock set to something totally different. Right now, when I hit that button, it's going to lock in my focus. So if I let go of it, it's going to go back into autofocus. But if I see maybe somebody's going to walk in front of me while I'm shooting, or if I want to do a creative focus pull, pull focus between the foreground and background, things like that, I can just come up here and press and hold that button, and it's just going to stop autofocus. Now, Amber likes it to where she can just press it, and it disables autofocus. She presses it again, and it enables it again whereas I just like to press it and hold it. As long as I'm holding it, I know autofocus is not working, then I can let go of it and it re-engages it, basically giving me the best of both worlds at that point. So the AF button, I have that set up to be a magnifier. The reason for that is it has a little magnifier picture next to it. And when I first started using Sony, I could never remember where that was at. So I just set that button up and that's just there to help you. You punch that, um, you can set it up to do to, to, I think, two or four times and it just helps you get a better manual focus pull and make sure you're really crispy in focus. The focus hold button can be found on many of Sony's lenses. This is just quite frankly a button that's just on the lens that you can program to be whatever you would like, whatever options are available in the custom menu. I don't find myself using it too much for video uh, because when I press on the button, I seem to move my camera a little bit and I'd rather not have that additional move and shake. So right now I have it set to whatever the uh, photography option is, but you can set it to whatever you'd like. So we're going to come over here to the one, two, three, four, fifth tab on page two, and we're going to change this display quality. We're going to change that to high, and that's just going to make sure that we're seeing the absolute best image we can on the back of that screen. Power saving time, you can set that to whatever you like. I like to have at least five minutes. Um, that way it doesn't power off on me prematurely. And if it does power off, you can just hit the shutter or pretty much work any of the buttons and it will trigger it to come back on. Auto power off temperature. Now this is the temperature at which the camera says, hey, I need to take a little break. It's really hot out here and it needs to shut off to preserve itself. Um, for instance, this would be handy if you were like we were a few months ago shooting on the beaches of uh, Mexico and it's a beautiful wedding, but the sun is just beating down. You want to make sure not only that the camera um, protects itself, but also you want to make sure it doesn't shut down too early because you want to get all those beautiful shots. So we're going to set that to high just to help with that extra time. All right, right next to the video tab on this little wheel up here, you have one and two. Now I've set these up to be my, if all else fails, I can switch to this and be okay. Now I have two set up because it's the closest and I do this more often than not, run from an indoor type of shooting outdoor. Now most of the time I have the additional time to manually change my settings, but in the rare instance to where maybe they walk down the aisle and they're just going right outside and I need to get the shot no matter what. I have two programs to be my outdoor fail safe. So I switched this dial to number two, which is one notch over, and my settings are already put together for an outside exposure. The number one recall, I have that set up because I don't use it quite as often, but in the same situation, but in reverse, let's say I'm outside and we're going into our reception hall and it's really dark, I can switch it over to number one and that is set up for indoor low light shooting. And the way to set that up, let's go over here and we're gonna switch this over just to our, our video mode, which we're already there. and whatever you want it to be. So if I want it to be, let's say I want to go in where it's, I know it's going to be super dark. So I'm going to lower my shutter as far as possible. You can change your uh, mode. I think for my indoor mode, I have it to shutter priority and my outdoor mode aperture priority. And we're going to, let's say it's, it's going to be dark. So we're going to bring that down to as low as it'll go to a one sixtieth of a second. And I'm just going to bump my ISO over to auto. So this is my fail safe. Uh, my autofocus is turned on. Let's make sure that's on. Um, 
I am in manual exposure. Um, you know what? For indoor, let's change that to shutter priority so we don't go below 1 60th of a second because I'm shooting in 30p. Autofocus is on. Everything is set up the way I want, and you can pretty much change anything. Once you have that, you're going to go into your menu, and on the very first tab on page number three, it says 1 to memory. So we're going to go down here to memory and you're gonna select which one you want to program. All those settings you just set up for indoor or outdoor or whatever you choose um, are gonna be saved either one or two. So I can select one, I can select two, and when I hit that, it's registered. So let's say I'm outdoors and I wanna take advantage of that. Let's see, let's go back to here. Let's say I was at F, oh, I don't know, F 5.6, my ISO was at 100, and I'm gonna come rushing into a really dark candlelit reception. I haven't had time to set my lights up yet, and I need to get the shot. I can simply rotate this over to one, and it's gonna come up and show you the screen. I can hit my shutter or record button, and look at that. All of my settings are set up, ready to go for a low light situation. If I go back to my video settings, we're right back to where we started. So your settings will save there. Now I will tell you that if you go into your uh, memory recall and you change a bunch of settings, change your ISO, and then you exit out and then come back in, it resets. So we're back to square one, just something to be aware of. Now a feature Sony has added that I've never had on any other camera system is the ability to charge your battery with a USB cable. Now to make sure this is enabled, you're gonna to go to the fifth tab on page four and down here where it says USB power supply, we're gonna make sure that's set to on. So what that's gonna let you do is, let's say you're traveling, sometimes I travel with a very, very small kit and I don't wanna bring all of my chargers or maybe I just have forgotten one. With this option, you can just grab a readily available phone charger and plug it in and be able to charge your battery on the go. Or if you're doing an extended time lapse, you're able to plug in not only your intervalometer, but also a power source to make sure your camera is up and running the entire time. All right, everybody, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it really helps somebody set up their brand new Alpha 7 Mark III. I think you're gonna love this camera. I love it and cannot wait to show you what I've shot with it. Anyways, if you have any additional questions that maybe I missed or didn't cover, please leave a comment in the description below and I will do my best to help you with those questions. Thanks so much. Have a great day.